You are the chosen one. Hello, and thank you for watching. Uh, joining in with us today for part eight of Choosing One Studios Let's Play of Demon's Crest. Um, I'm your host, Corinne, and today we're telling you to cut out uh, whatever it is you're doing that's making you unhappy. Uh, this Let's Play is going to be a little bit different because I accidentally recorded a rather good take with my volume muted and didn't have all the passwords, save state, all that good stuff set up properly to be able to start us over again. So as we can see, we're back in level three, but the aerial gargoyle tears the stage to pieces. And we're going to take uh, the lower path after we grab this little urn over here, which technically we could take the claw, which is what I'm demonstrating right here, we could use the claw, but just tearing through right that, getting it there is so much easier, especially since with the fire gargoyle you could drop onto those spikes so easily, and they're not Mega Man spikes, but come on, that's just embarrassing. So right here we're going to switch to just plain old uh, fire here, so we can headbutt through the door. What annoying things that you always need fire to open up the doors. Um, any fire crest will do, and pretty soon we'll have a pretty sweet one. But those little suckers, they shoot a little thing, it'll turn to a platform after a moment, but the main function, the main enemy of this level, is the water. You can come here earlier, but we have the aquatic gargoyle, so stage is going to be no problem to us. Um, got skullfishes, full heal, um, once again, the aquatic gargoyle cannot stick to walls, so in sections with lots of water, you know, ascending's going to be our greatest strength. Not our attacks, because outside of water, the, area, the aquatic gargoyle, tidal gargoyle, tidal gargoyle, is very bad at attacking. Um, inside of it, he pretty much kills everything in like one or two hits tops, which with hand equipped, <laughs> everything just dies. Um, but I'm exploring very thoroughly, because there was an item here, which turned to be a vellum, which I could not remember where it was, and I didn't want to miss it, because I really want to fight the Dark Demon. Uh, I described trying to find it at every item as sort of like a shopping list. You know you're going to make spaghetti, you know exactly what it takes to make it, but you still forget the sauce. And you know, tell me how many times you've done it. I don't know, I've done it way too many times. Uh, so I found it up here. I'm just going to switch over to the buster, jump up, and blast right the hell through. Um, pick it up, the little sound, and now we've only got one vellum, one urn. I know where the last urn is off the top of my head. I don't remember where the last vellum was, but I know I'll find it. Worst case scenario, we might have to backtrack, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be easy enough to find. Um, and now we're just sort of jumping up in place, fun, and... Um, we're going to continue on. Um, this water area is... It's a lot more frustrating if you're actually trying to dodge the water. These little platforms can protect you, and that always was how I thought you were supposed to do the level, uh, except for a little detail where, in the ending video, it shows you various crests you're supposed to use to fight various bosses. It shows that against Skula, the boss of this area, which makes absolutely no sense to me, because this spot is just murder, and you can do it very easily, obviously. But uh, it's just not very fun to do that when you're constantly just losing health, but being buffeted around because the damage like that throws you back. It's even worse with the water because it'll hit you randomly. You can be hit by enemies still too, and you don't really have that much health. I mean, you know, we do have quite a bit of health right now, but we wouldn't have had that if we were in this far in the game. And I'm collecting all the money just to make sure there's nothing in there of value. Um, checking out all the ceilings to make sure I don't miss any alcoves and showing that I obviously would kill those little things. But there's a little thing I'm avoiding for some reason. Um, I don't know why I'm just taking my time getting to it. But under, behind those blocks, which are destroyable, yeah, the water gargoyle can do it, but only underwater. We're gonna go in here as a little side path, and we're gonna find a piece of health, which is definitely going to help against Skula. Every last little piece of health is going to help. But if we go back through here, you'll recognize this area very much, not from this angle, but from this one. It's the not necessary platforming section of part three. Um, you can actually jump in here and skip the first section, but you would miss the vellum and part of the stages. And if you're not exploring the whole game, I mean, don't get me wrong, I love speedruns. This isn't a speedrun, though. It's more of a, you're sitting here with me, we're playing the game, I'm showing you how I do it kind of a thing to have some fun. But... I don't know, if you're not at some point exploring everything the game has to offer, in my opinion, unless it's some crazy challenge that's just not fun anymore, you're missing out. And you shouldn't miss out. 
This was one of my favorite childhood games. I played like every year. I'm still not that great at it, um, but you know, it's a hard game. Um, one thing I'd also really recommend here is not using the title gargoyle. I was fighting against it, but I took a moment here um, and I found the password data because I was going to come back and actually fight it as another form. But you'll see that I actually ended up counting against me. So right here we're about to cut. I'm going to take this moment to recommend you watch Spidery One's Half-Life 2 Let's Play. She's doing a hard mode with no deaths. It's absolutely awesome. I'm going to link to it in the description. But after a cut, we're going to fight. And that cuts now. So we're about to fight Skula. He's a two-part boss. The head on its own can spin around, kick, bounce around, and the body can ram at you and launch the head. That little scurrying move and jumping is all that it has after you destroy the, the, bot, the head, which we'll actually see later on, but we're going to go for the body approach first, because the body is what launches the head. Um, I'm doing it with this power even though it's massively inefficient, simply because that's what the, the ending shows you're supposed to use against it, and I've never done it before. So, you know, having some fun. Uh, the body's already dead. And now the head is impossible to hit with this power. But I thought I would try, see if like, you know, it jumps up, I could get it, but just tagging it during that stage was just way too hectic, so I wasn't really pulling it off. It didn't really seem like I could leave my shots. So I switch over to the ground gargoyle I usually use to waste on this guy. He can't spin, he can't attack, can't do anything. And in just a moment, he bursts into flames and we get another piece of health. So the game didn't consider him that important of a boss, but Hey, he gave us a piece of health, and that's better than nothing. Um, so now, uh, I'm going to take this moment, there's a little bit of this here, and I'm going to mention again, uh, definitely check out Spidery One's Let's Play of Half-Life 2. It's awesome. Um, I've, sometimes the Half-Life 2 engine makes me sick with the way it spins around, which I'm not the only one on. But uh, our next video is going to be the second water level. Uh, it's We're going to take the whole thing from the beginning instead of dropping it in the second section. I believe there's an, some other items hidden in there and a boss that is a lot easier than I used to think it was. Uh, last time I ended up beating it without taking a single hit, so we're going to see if I can do the same thing here. The level's kind of nasty. It's got a lot of spike traps, which a lot of like, reef barriers, which the, the water gargoyle's ability actually comes in really handy on. So we're going to see how that works out for me. Hopefully very, very, very well. And I'm actually going to try going back and destroying the head to see if the body is all that easy. And you're going to see just how well that worked out for me. I think you'll get a kick out of it, which will be right after a cut. And here we are back in time. Uh, I'm going to start off this time by going to the Buster, because it's very easy to just jump up, align with his head, and waste on it with the Buster. Um, but I get some surprising results here, because I was being a dingbat. So there he goes, jumps up. The head is already about to turn red. I, it already is turning red, but it's about to glow red. And there it is, the head's gone. But the body's still there, and what's this? I apparently forgot how to jump, uh, because that really that's all it does, knows how to do still. Uh, it looks kind of creepy without a, a head, I'll be honest. I don't think I ever fought it like this when I was younger. But now, uh, yeah, I, we can do a lot of damage with the ground ground well. This is usually how I waste the head so quickly. But it tagged me, and now I'm dead. So <laughs> don't underestimate these enemies. They can still beat you down if you let them. So I want to take this moment to thank you again for watching my videos. I hope you enjoyed this silly little thing I had at the end of my last video, um, the little extra. And I hope you have an absolutely wonderful day, and that you join us next time. Um, this has been Corinne with Choosin One Studios, and I hope that you have yourself an absolutely marvelously wonderful day. And since I have a couple more seconds here that I recorded because I was having fun with the music, I'm going to take this moment again to thank you for watching. Why? Because I really appreciate it, and this has been really fun for me, I hope it's been fun for you too, and I encourage you to comment. Thank you.